and it's time for FOMO. So we are looking at Tesla, which has now turned negative as we are seeing some of these. I mean, I was just looking at the NASDAQ, the Dow at session lows here in real time. Tesla has reversed its gain, although it's still up 10% this week. So it's still pacing to be the best performer in the S&P 500, at least this week. You know, I'm just comparing it to some of the other uh, names that we throw in the bucket with it sometimes. Uh, you look at a name like, let's say, AMD down 4.4%. You've got Meta Platforms down 3.5%. NVIDIA down 3.6%. So, hey, down uh, point, uh, you know, two-thirds of a percent, let's call it. Not so bad uh, when you compare it to some of its peers in that mega, uh, mega cap tech world. I mean, no kidding. And the fact that it's been able to cling on to a double digit percentage gain this week, it's now extending its third straight winning session here. It was extending its third straight winning session here before then reversing in real time. But what is interesting to me to tie together the UAW strike with all things Tesla, analysts are saying that Tesla could be the big winner here of this, this deal. The Detroit threes have already struggled pretty notably with their transitioning into e becoming a more EV focused. And now I was reading that Tesla actually will pay its workers or currently pays its workers, excuse me, 38% less than some of these companies. So Tesla ha for years has been able to fend off these uni unionizing efforts at its U.S. factories, which has helped it widen its advantages that it enjoys in the EV space. So Gene Munster, who's a managing partner with Deepwater Asset Management, said Tesla will emerge stronger from this. That He said that big auto is in a tight place when it comes to transitioning its business to electric and the current UAW discussions will eventually result in a steep increase in costs that will further push them into the red. I thought that was such a good point because, I mean, Ford has been pretty transparent. Their EV business is losing billions of dollars annually. So this is definitely not the situation you want to be in when you're working on becoming more profitable, no doubt. We also did see actually Dan Ives, Wedbush's Dan Ives, say that if this strike lasts longer than four weeks, which was, he was one of the several analysts I actually saw that highlighted that four-week mark, it would be a major hit to the EV ambitions of GM and Ford near term and for that reason just continuing to propel tesla's dominant position as the ev i mean really the ev name i will say i don't necessarily think it was ever threatened by a ford or gm but slowly chipping away at market share which we have more seen overseas really with a name like byd but i would say this is an interesting story the fact that they're actually turning some of these companies pain into perhaps tesla's gain it seems like no matter what, we somehow find a way to, to spin this as a positive for Tesla. Look, Tesla is going to be largely unaffected by this, and that's huge uh, for Tesla. It's going to be more the other companies come out weaker. Uh, Tesla kind of comes out the same. I kind of see it as a false equivalency, though, to look at this in the EV world between Ford and, and Tesla. Look, even if Ford had all of their cars as all electric as, as choices, I'm not sure that the customer of Tesla is the same customer who's looking at a Ford Escape or you know, some other car that Ford makes, the F-150, for example. They're just not the same consumer. So I look at this and you know, if you're in the price camp uh, and you, you, you make enough to go buy a new Tesla, or, or you know a Tesla in the last few years, you're you're not really the same uh, same person to, that, that's looking at, at at Ford vehicles. So. The big question is going to be what this deal looks like on the other side for some of these companies, what they do to continue to stay relevant and competitive in this space going forward. But we've said all along, if Tesla is being priced as a car company, it's way overvalued. It's not. It's being priced as a tech company. And then you have to think about, OK, what kind of tech company is it? It's also inventing things in the battery space. It has investments into solar. It is not just the vehicles we see driving on the street. I think that's that's exactly what I was going to say. And I think that's such a good point because, you know, we make the argument that with its valuation, I think the bulls of this name say it's not an auto company. It's not a pure play into the automotive industry. So then for that reason, can we really say that they're going to benefit from a pure play automotive headwind. I, I don't necessarily think you can make that same argument because like you said, Alex, sort of different veins of business at this point. So for those that argue this isn't a car company, then I don't necessarily think that they can benefit from the pure play car company's weakness. I mean, the name like Ford, GM, trade nowhere near the same multiple as Tesla. Their performance on a year-to-day -day basis is not even comp comparable at this point. Tesla, though, is up 124% this year. They pulled back about 12% from their highs, which is 
just a much better position than they were in about a week and a half ago, even with this nice jump this week, up 171% from their low. Tesla's a frequent flyer on this show because it sees such great volume. It, mm -hmm. it always has news. We mentioned relatively light, actually, new Tesla news today, but this name just sees such outstanding interest from so many traders and investors. And even with today's slight move to the downside, it's always a fun one to look at here.